San Andreas Fault. 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 There hasn't been a big earthquake on the southern San Andreas Fault for a long time, and we may have found a reason why. In the shadow of California's golden hills and sprawling cities, an ancient line pulses quietly beneath the surface, a line that has shaped the fate of millions for generations. For most, the San Andreas Fault is little more than a term whispered in classroom lessons or evoked in nervous conversation when the ground shudders. But today, attention is once again drawn to that hidden seam, stirred by renewed scientific scrutiny and reminders of long-standing risk. The notion of visible, spreading cracks catches the public imagination. But in truth, what's most alarming to geologists is something harder to see. The slow, persistent accumulation of tectonic strain along the fault. Southern California, a region that hasn't witnessed a major earthquake along the San Andreas since 1857, finds itself at the nexus of mounting concern. The ground here, beneath the palm-crowded boulevards of Los Angeles and the vast reach of the desert, is betraying subtle signs of stress. Now, with NASA's satellites casting their gaze from above, anomalies in ground movement once invisible are rendered more certain. The ground is shifting ever so slightly, but these changes, though not dramatic to the naked eye, are significant to scientists who understand what they portend. Behind each measurement lies the weight of centuries of tectonic stress, the lingering memory of past calamities, and a future that grows ever more uncertain as strain builds. This historical context and our expanding knowledge drives authorities to reconsider readiness measures and disaster response not the result of a sudden catastrophic surface crack, but due to the ongoing incremental warning signs accumulating beneath the surface. What does it mean when entire communities, an economy, a culture, and a cradle of innovation must weigh the prospect of disruption in the face of invisible, irresistible forces? Could this pressure eventually be the prelude to a major seismic event, a rupture that leaves an indelible mark on both the natural and human landscapes of California. Stretching nearly 800 miles through the most populous state in the nation, the San Andreas Fault isn't just a mark on a map, it's a living interface, tracing a rugged path from the coastal bluffs of Northern California through rolling farmland, pine-clad ridges, and into the heart of the arid South. Here, two titanic plates, the Pacific and the North American, sit locked in an eternal contest, grinding slowly past one another. The San Andreas is a classic example of what scientists call a strike-slip fault. Unlike faults where tectonic plates collide or pull apart, here they slide laterally, steadily, sometimes imperceptibly, sometimes violently. The result is tension that accumulates mostly unseen, building over decades or even centuries before a sudden release redraws the landscape in violent moments of reckoning. If you pay close attention in certain places, you'll find clues already etched into the earth, along well-known segments, such as the Carrizo Plain. Roads bend starkly, fence lines veer abruptly off course, and streams seem to shift direction, evidence of slow, inexorable movement over generations. Yet these quiet deformities, while striking, pale beside the implications of satellite data now used to measure deformation with pinpoint accuracy. NASA, using high-resolution imaging, GPS, and advanced radar, monitors subtle movements in the Earth's crust. In recent years, the southern regions, especially those near the Salton Sea, have demonstrated a slow but measurable change in ground elevation and position, indicating that stress is accumulating. But the story is not just about visible signs. NASA and other scientific agencies create precise three-dimensional models showing the faintest bulges, compressions, and warps, often too subtle for the untrained eye. These changes, measured in millimeters per year, are the product of immense forces gathering deep below. In places like the Coachella Valley and Carrizo Plain, this evidence converges on a sobering truth. 
the southern section of the San Andreas Fault is accumulating tectonic energy at a rate that makes another large earthquake statistically likely, though impossible to predict precisely in time. For most people, these movements may seem innocuous. After all, isn't California always on the move? Yet scientists warn that beneath these incremental slides, the greatest danger lies in the so-called locked sections, fault segments that are not slowly slipping, but are stuck fast. These silent segments, accumulating and storing energy, are the most likely to produce large and damaging earthquakes when they finally rupture. Like a stretched rubber band pulled too far, when these segments finally give, the result can be both explosive and unpredictable. Could these strains and shifting landforms be the initial stirrings of a far greater release? Or are they merely inevitable arcs in the planet's ceaseless adjustment, giving us warning enough to prepare? For decades, scientists have sought ways to peer into the Earth and monitor the slow, steady progression of tectonic forces. Now, NASA's network of Earth-observing satellites forms a vigilant constellation, continually tracking changes in the land's shape and position. Technologies like GPS networks, LIDAR, and especially synthetic aperture radar, INSAR, have transformed our understanding of these hidden mechanics. Over the past many years, the southern San Andreas, often overshadowed in the public eye by regions closer to San Francisco, has been a focus for scientists. They have observed not only gradual steady shifts, but also an intricate pattern of fault creep and intersegment strain. In places where the Earth was once thought stable, slight convexities and depressions now stand out in high-resolution radar scans. These aren't the dramatic cracks of disaster movies, but their meaning is clear to geologists. Tectonic loading along the fault is ongoing and significant. Layered atop these images, NASA and research partners use data from ground-based GPS stations that record ground movement to within a few millimeters. Combined with satellite imagery, this allows researchers to build time-lapse models of strain accumulation, noting how one area may be gently slipping while another remains locked. In the southern reaches of the fault, where a major quake has not struck since the days before the Civil War, these data sets reveal that strain is steadily returning toward historic levels seen before past large earthquakes. But what does all this mean for the future? Most California earthquakes do not arrive without warning in the sense of accumulating tectonic stress, but precise prediction down to days or weeks remains beyond current scientific reach. What scientists can say, based on statistical analysis, geological records, and decades of observation, is that the chances of a major earthquake along the southern San Andreas Fault are high, and that ongoing monitoring is essential for public safety. While some ground movement can relieve stress, the locked, quiet fault sections are the real focus of concern. Their silence, rather than their activity, is what keeps emergency planners awake at night. These are the places where energy builds undetected, until one day, with little warning, it is released. Rarely in California's history has scientific finding alone led to the kind of preemptive, dramatic shutdown sometimes imagined in fiction or viral rumor. Instead, readiness ebbs and flows with each new report and aftershock. Communities nearest the fault, the towns of the Coachella Valley, the neighborhoods around Palm Springs, the outer suburbs of Los Angeles, are the first to practice earthquake drills, reinforce bridges, and develop contingency plans. Emergency authorities routinely review evacuation protocols, close highways during aftershocks or when land movement threatens, and perform inspections of key infrastructure. Highways, rail lines, and water infrastructure are often the focus of these precautions, especially where routes cross the San Andreas Fault and other active faults. Banners of caution may flutter over bridges after minor quakes, Highways are periodically rerouted around areas of concern and transport agencies remain vigilant. But unlike the notion of a total shutdown of California, which has not, and almost certainly would not, be enacted in anticipation alone, the reality 
is more measured. Select evacuations, closures, and states of emergency accompany credible threats or after powerful aftershocks, not the emergence of slow deformation or new scientific data alone. From agricultural heartlands to city neighborhoods, readiness means being able to respond rapidly if the need arises. Water authorities map and reinforce major pipelines and aqueducts, aware of their proximity to active faults, and sometimes divert flows preemptively in the wake of a significant quake or during acute risk periods. Local governments work with state and federal agencies to keep communication lines clear, urge residents to maintain go bags, and practice earthquake drills at schools, offices, and public venues. Even from the sky, patterns of urban lighting can shift in response to disaster. As neighborhoods evacuate after an earthquake or infrastructure is temporarily shut down for inspection and repair. In dense urban centers, some businesses may shutter following an aftershock, schools suspend classes, and hospitals prepare for surges in patients, all built on a foundation of preparation and resilience rather than panic. Amidst this readiness, residents remember stories of the 1906 San Francisco devastation, the 1971 San Fernando quake, the Northridge earthquake of 1994, or more recent temblers. Government advisories urge planning for possible aftershocks, liquefaction in vulnerable soils, landslides on unstable slopes, and the risk of fire should gas lines rupture during a major event. Yet for all the official focus on readiness, a deeper anxiety lingers. No one can say with certainty when or where the next large earthquake will occur. What would the first real jolt feel like? Should the locked fault suddenly let go? In the everyday pause after a tremor and the steady reminders to prepare, the question is never far away. Is preparation enough or will the limits of human planning always be tested by the tectonic forces beneath our feet? California's infrastructure is the circulatory system of a modern state. Bridges, aqueducts, pipelines, power line, and rail. Each crosses or parallels active faults at multiple points, placing them in direct line with the forces of seismic rupture. Consider the hazards at the intersection of infrastructure and fault. Power transmission corridors pass over the San Andreas, near San Bernardino, for example, and damage here could lead to widespread power outages. Water pipelines, engineered to span major faults, are reinforced but still vulnerable. Should movement shift the ground by even a meter or more, something that has happened in past earthquakes, lines could crack or rupture, threatening water supply to millions. Rail networks must grapple with the possibility of buckled or offset tracks, which can and have stranded commuters and cargo following major quakes. Airports, particularly those built on sedimentary basins that amplify shaking, must plan for possible runway cracks and the risk of disruption to emergency flights and supply chains. Telecommunications line, fiber optics, cell towers, and switching stations cross the fault's length, adding another layer of vulnerability. Engineers and officials guided by state-of-the-art mapping and NASA's deformation models, prioritize repairs and upgrades in the most vulnerable corridors. Many structures have been retrofitted, but complete seismic resilience remains a challenging target, especially for older bridges, pipelines, and aqueducts. Even systems updated after past disasters may face challenges if strained beyond their original design specifications. In this ever-evolving landscape, readiness is a continual process, a matter of constant vigilance and adaptation. How long could daily life be disrupted after a large earthquake? Recovery efforts depend on the magnitude of the event, the portion of the fault involved, and the affected infrastructure. But history shows that even moderate earthquakes can take days or weeks to fully recover from. In the event of a major rupture along the southern San Andreas, supply chains and daily commutes could be interrupted and the effects felt across the economy. The lesson is clear. It is not just the ground itself that is at risk from seismic activity, but the interconnected web of vital systems 
on which modern life depends. As scientists study the San Andreas Fault, they consider not just its length, but its connections. The San Andreas is the backbone of a larger network of active faults, including the San Jacinto, the Elsinore, and others, stretching like a spider web beneath Southern California. Together, these interconnected faults form a complex system with the potential for multi-segment ruptures. Research shows that while most earthquakes are confined to a single fault segment, large events can occasionally jump from one fault to another through closely connected systems. Computer modeling and recent geological studies suggest that a rupture beginning on one segment can, in some scenarios, extend to neighboring faults, amplifying the overall impact. Monitoring these relationships is now a top priority for researchers. Satellite and seismic data reveal micro tremors and subtle ground shifts, not only along the San Andreas, but also in nearby faults, reflecting the interconnected stress regime. The possibility, while still under study, that a large rupture could trigger secondary events on adjacent faults is a real concern for regional planners. Most experts stress, however, that while multi-fault ruptures are possible, they remain rare compared to typical single-segment events. This pushes planners to focus on readiness. Digital models simulate how a rupture would ripple through densely populated regions, identifying where shaking would be strongest, which bridges or pipelines are most exposed, and how emergency supplies should be distributed. Civil engineers study and revise building standards, focusing on soft soil neighborhoods most at risk for liquefaction, a process that can turn solid ground to a jelly-like state during shaking. Fire departments prepare for cascading hazards, ruptured gas mains, power outages, and wildfires. In rural areas where aqueducts and irrigation channels cross active faults, the stakes are equally high. A damaged aqueduct could disrupt crops for seasons. Repairs may be complicated by impassable roads and damaged equipment. Farmers and rural residents maintain wells and store supplies, balancing the needs of the moment with memories of past disruption. Cities, meanwhile, recalibrate their pace. Schools practice earthquake drills. Families keep emergency kits and review evacuation plans. The threat of the big one, once dismissed as distant folklore, is woven into daily life, a collective memory, an ongoing challenge. In every aspect of this preparation, one truth stands out. Earthquakes cannot be prevented, but their worst outcomes can be mitigated by readiness, adaptation, and scientific vigilance. Under the hush of steady preparation, with highways inspected and communities practicing drills, the magnitude of California's predicament settles in. The San Andreas is more than a geological boundary. It is a crucible, a constant test of the uneasy alliance between civilization and the churning power beneath. Thanks to agencies like NASA and the USGS, the invisible slow dance of tectonic plates is tracked and measured in unprecedented detail. We know more than previous generations and we plan more thoroughly. Today, California stands watchful. Its people, infrastructure, and leaders bound together by a recognition that some forces can be measured, mapped, and planned for, but never completely mastered. As each year passes without a major quake, tension mounts in the ground beneath and the mines above. Preparation and vigilance become acts of daily resilience. For in the end, the story of the San Andreas Fault is not finished. Its chapters are written in slow movement and sudden rupture in lines measured by satellites and scars remembered by generations. Whether this next chapter brings calm or calamity, the lessons remain. Vigilance can save lives. Humility before nature is wiser than denial. And resilience is the true foundation of life atop California's shifting ground.